I'd like everyone to turn their stupid videos off so it's just you and me, baby. I would like that. Yeah. Um, Jack, thank you for joining us uh, all the way from New York City. Uh, <laughs> it's Jack, past midnight, by the way. So it's past midnight, by the way. Oh, my God, I bet. <laughs> you tiger, you staying up late. Good for <laughs> you, man. That's amazing. Um, Jack can be seen, you guys, all across entertainment. Uh, from the Brothers McMullen, uh, Sex in the City, HBR, uh, Blue Bloods from CBRs, and beyond. Jack, <laughs> you have a diverse canon of work. Can you tell me when did you know you wanted to be a part of this crazy business and how did you get started? Um, long, long time ago. Um... I was, uh, you know, raised here in the city, born and raised in the city on the west side. So, of course, the first time I ever saw a west side story, I came home after about three viewings. My sisters thought for sure I was going to catch a beating. They were standing there, and I was like, hang on, Mom, before you spank the shit out of me. Tonight, tonight, won't be just any night. She sent me to my room. My sisters were completely crestfallen. And, you know, I'm in the room. My mother brings me some food. And she goes, do you think this is something you might want to do? And I go, oh, Ma, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> and then I broke into uh, Maria, you know, so. <laughs> can you go ahead and break in again? I can break into Maria. Oh. met a girl named Maria. Oh, Jack, you're seducing me. Get out. Get out. Well, now that you got that beard off, you know, hey. Hey, what can, that wasn't me. I don't know who you're talking about. But, uh, I don't know what you're talking about with the beard situation. I shave every day. But, uh, Jack, hey, tell me, were you ever in, like, some kind of musical kind of rock band group type situation? Well, I started my first band when I was about 16 or 17 years old. And, uh, yeah, I, I, we, <laughs> I had bands that were named Pig Iron, uh, Jackson and the Amen, uh, Riverside Drive, um, you know, and then I did some work with Atlantic Records for a while and, and, and what have you. But, um, yeah, I, I, I've been doing this for, for quite a long time. So. That's amazing. Who would you say are your biggest influences? Um, both Elvises, Elvis Presley and Elvis Costello. So that would be Elvi, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, two, two rock and roll champions. Two yeah. Elvises would be one Elvi, right? <laughs> Um, hey, when did you feel like you could go ahead? For those Latin, uh, you know, aficionados among us. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish there were more. Um, <laughs> Jack, tell me, when did you get your big break? Big break, as they say. Well, big break. Um, I did a tiny little teen sex comedy called Porky's. Oh, was it tiny? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Pee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. There was Pee Wee in it, um, <clears throat> and I was flowing down to Miami uh, to be like a glorified extra background guy. And 20th Century Fox saw me on uh, on the rushes and uh, asked the director about me. And the director said, "Well, um, I've known Jack for quite a while, and I thought that he might be, you know, one of the guys, the Angel Beach High guys." And they said, well, write him into the script. We love him. And boom, uh, Bob Clark walks up to me right before the big shack scene when we're all completely fucking naked. And he said, <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, Fox liked you. You have your SAG card. So, like, say whatever you want on screen, on camera. And I, he walks away. And I turn to the actor next to me. I go, what the fuck just happened? And he looked at me. And he goes, fuck you. <laughs> True story. Well, that thing went on to make uh, about 200 million bucks. Whoa. 1982 money. Okay. So, I mean, the first couple of checks I was getting for residuals were like 16, 18 grand. Whoa. It was fucking crazy money. So I figured, hey, maybe I can do this. So yeah. we shot the sequel in, uh, in Miami about uh, nine months later. And that film only made about 90 million bucks. So, 
and we got uh, maybe 125, 130 credits later, here I am. Well, listen, Jack, residuals, heck yeah, man, you dirty dog. Sounds so gross when you think about it, six feet. Hey, but uh, I think <laughs> porn always really makes the big bucks, you know, unless you're <laughs> Mia Khalifa. I mean, my God, I was completely naked, full frontal, the whole deal. No, where can I watch? Where can I watch your situation? Well, well, you can, I have a webcam right now, so. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Jack. Oh, oh, you mean the film? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't want to see your dong just now. It's just not the right moment, I think. Uh, the mom's here. It would be of it, so. um, we should, uh, yeah, I, I can send you a link to Porky's if you like. I mean, my God. Yeah, I love that it's called Porky's. <laughs> Porky's. Porky's 1 and Porky's 2 the next day. So they picked it up on the next day, right? Yeah, the next day, hanging yeah. lasted or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, Everybody was in suspense, right? <laughs> Jack, so the, the biggest thing that you're famous for is your lead role in The Brothers McMullen, which was uh, a super low budget indie film that actually won the Grand Jury Prize for the Best Picture at the Sundance Film Festival that year. And I'd like to know what was that like? Well, um, Ed Burns and I met on a softball team, and, and I've always said I've gotten more work from playing softball than I've ever gotten from any fucking agent or any manager in my life. Um, and he came to me about this script. We're talking about it in the bar that was sponsoring our team. And over beer and darts, he was telling me about this, you know, thing about three Irish American brothers and, you know, and their commitments and, and their fear of commitment and, and religion and all this kind of stuff. At the end of the night, we're drunk, we're on our ass, we're on fucking Columbus Avenue, and he's like, oh, man, we're going to make the greatest fucking movie ever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he doesn't show up for the rest of the softball season. Come September, nothing happens, and then all of a sudden, I get a phone call, and he goes, hey, man, it's Ed Burns, I got some startup money, I got the script finished, I'm like, going, who the fuck is this? It's Ed Burns, it's about that Irish thing. I'm like, going, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, how much startup money you got? He goes, I got 15 grand. I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, send me the script, long story short, we shot the fucking thing. On weekends, it took eight fucking months to shoot. Wow. On weekends, I was carrying about 45 extra pounds, and we finally got it, uh, we got it in the can, like just before my 40th birthday. That's in April. December, I get a call from Eddie. He disappeared again. He disappeared for eight months, and I get a call from Eddie going, hey, motherfucker, pack your bags. We're going to Sundance. Click. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck just happened? We go to Sundance after the very first screening. We are the darlings of the film festival. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, right before the Grand Jury Prize, um, uh, right before the uh, award ceremonies, I walked up to uh, Sam Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson, who oh. I... Sam Jackson? Yeah, he was on the jury. and uh, But I had known Sam from playing softball in the Broadway Show League when he was doing Once on this Island. And I walked up to him and I go, hey, Sam, it's Jack Mulcahy. He goes, I don't know who you are, motherfucker. <laughs> and I said to him, so tonight, man. And he looks at me and he goes, good luck. And he walks away. And I'm like, oh, that could mean any fucking thing. Wow. And uh, sure enough, you know, and we were in competition with an awful lot of really, really cool films. And uh, yeah, we, we, we wound up winning the fucking thing. And, you know, everything changed after that. I was able to get representation. I get manager. I could get indoors. And, you know, that's, that's basically what that was from a $15,000 film, which wound up making about $40 million. So. Jack, that's what it's all about. I'm so happy that all those things came came into uh, consideration for you because I mean other I well I don't know I mean it's tough out there being an actor isn't it yeah it is tough it is tough even even you know because ha half of our work is looking for work and now that we're in this pandemic you know we we can you know we can do as much as we can but I just finished seven weeks of negotiating the new SAG after contracts because I'm on the TV theatrical negotiating committee and that was a fucking I mean even in the best of times, those are really, really tough negotiations. Yeah. But that was the overarching thing about, you know, negotiating in a pandemic. 
it was it was it was surreal and this was my third one but you know i'm i'm more proud of this one than i was the other two and you know it's just, we really really got it done so those well, are out there that are sag after members you're going to be getting a postcard soon so please vote it up vote yes on this contract it's really really good when we get back to work we're taking every precaution that's amazing, Jack, and thank you. I don't know if there's any actors out in the house tonight, uh, aside from me and maybe a few other uh, bologna sauce uh, champions or whatever, but um, I, wanna, I wanna let you know, Jack, that you caught my attention, not in all of your hard work, but in, uh, in uh, your portrayal of Rem Lazar, which is why a lot of us are here tonight. I love Rem Lazar. <laughs> For those of you who don't know the movie, Creating Rem Lazar is one of my personal favorites. It's, uh, I believe, a pioneer in terms of like superhero musicals. Mm -hmm. uh, from the digital effects, the acting, the writing, the timing, the whole thing is really special. Um, and I'd, actually, I'd like to play a clip from the movie so uh, you can really get a sense for what I mean. Uh, Sarah, can you play us a clip from the movie? Thank you, Sarah. just about had it with your daydreaming in class. I wasn't just... And I will hear no more stories about your imaginary worlds. When you're in my classroom, this is the only world there is. Zach, I think it's time for you to discuss your behavior with the principal. Again. But... No more stories. No excuses. No buts. <laughs> Wow. Oh. Wow. Round of applause, you guys. Wow, right? Uh, 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 uh. Woo, fuck oh, wow. oh, wow. I just got to say, Jack, um, wow. I mean, thank I you, Jeanette. Yes. Thank you, Jeanette. <laughs> Jack, I, I, I love you. I feel like through this, we've become sort of comrades, sort of. Yeah, we're, we're, we're tight. Yeah. And I, I, I sense that we understand that we understand things between each other. Yeah, it's an unspoken thing. It's an unspoken thing. And hey, Jack, so tell me about Rem Lazar and your, your reaction to the cult uh, following that it has uh, achieved here, the cult status, I suppose. Well, you know, it, it, 
when we were shooting the thing, I mean, we had an awful lot of fun, but it was about a four or five day shoot, you know, two, two or three days here in the city and then two or three days upstate New York. Um, and we just, we just had like a really, really good time. It, and Mark Muley, the composer was wonderful. Scott Zachran, the director and the writer and I, and who also played Volrock in the movie. We have maintained our friendship. Vol Volrock is the bad guy, right? Rocker's the bad guy, yes. Oh. Yes, we're all. <laughs> and, uh, and we've maintained a relationship over these, you know, 30 years or so. And he's as blown away by the, uh, by, by, by the attention that thing has gotten as, as I am. And I only heard about it maybe six or seven years ago. Because the generation that grew up with that is now, you know, computer savvy, and they found the links and they started sharing these things. And before you know it, it's like popping up all over the place. And, you know, for a guy who's my age right now, it's like, oh, my God, I am super relevant with, an, with another generation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you I mean, are, Jack. Yes. I mean, you don't, you don't find too many, like, 66-year-old guys that are, like, really fucking happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and Rem is like so sweet and, and, and then watching all the comments online. I mean, some of them are just like really weird. Oh, the pedophile. Oh, I wouldn't have my kid with Rem. You know, it's just like, but you know, for the most part, all these things are like really, really positive. And <clears throat> there was one guy who was a, a director and he was asking me questions about it. He goes, do you think that Scott like knew the angles, you know, that he was shooting were going to be like so hip and so cool? I'm like, oh, no, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. None of us did. <laughs> and then this guy rented out a theater in Los Angeles, 400 seats and sold it out and asked me, could I fly out? And I said, well, I'll fly out if you pay for it. He goes, well, no, but... <laughs> And he sold the thing out and it was just like, you know, mind blowing. And then I see like all the clicks and all, all the viewings and all this kind of stuff and all the different pages of it. And it just completely blows me away. And I'm yeah. honored actually. I, wait, you said you're honored? I'm honored, yes. Jack, I'm honored to talk with you about it because I will say uh, in terms of cult classics, I mean, this is like the most delightful thing I've seen since The Room. Of The Room. Yeah. <laughs> Not that, not, yeah, not that anyone cares. Nobody cares about the room. Uh, hey, uh, question, question. If somebody yeah. wanted to continue watching your movie tonight or they wanted to watch Creating Rem Lazar, mm -hmm. uh, where could they go to watch it? YouTube. YouTube? Yeah, just type in Creating Rem Lazar and it'll pop up in like several different versions. Yeah. What's the best version? Creating Rem Lazar. <laughs> right on, dude. Well, Jack, this has been like such an honor to talk with you and to get to know you because people don't know this, but you guys, Jack here um, throughout the entire uh, process of putting this show together has actually been, uh, Dad, turn your phone off. Get out of here. Get the phone, Dad. Come on, Dad. Go in another room. Um, this process has been so delightful and joyful with you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. You've been great. Thanks, everybody. We've got plenty of time. It's dark. Yeah. And we're in a neighborhood. Yeah. And when you're in a neighborhood, someone found a couple of pockets. No, shit. <laughs> well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, we are uh, Johnny Soul Train. Thanks for uh, tuning in tonight. We got a couple of songs.
much for coming out to the show tonight. We had such a blast. This was awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Um, everybody say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.